Welcome back to the Annapolis Yacht Club Wednesday Night Races. I'm Dave Gundell from T2P TV, coming to you from the Boatyard Barn Grill Video Boat. A nice, gusty, westerly breeze this evening. Sunny skies, warm air, and a shifty breeze. Let's keep an eye on how it's going. It's going to be a nice night out here on the Chesapeake Bay. Less than 30 seconds until the first start of the evening. The wind is in a down cycle right now. In fact, it's down to just about four or five knots. Ramrod, Ramrod on the uh, push here, Dave. Yeah, I like what Ramrod's doing here. They, uh, they're very well sailed. They just had a little match racing action there. The kite is up within five seconds. Textbook perfect from the boys on Ramrod this evening. So as the breeze has died off here, it's turned a little bit reachier, and lanes are all important. And I'm worried that if you're down the line a little bit in the back of this pack, you're going to have a tough trip out the river. Nice look at the J111 Dark Horse here, picking their way out the river. There's a nice puff up ahead they're sailing up into. Nice puff on a dying breeze. With Chris Humphrey doing the trimming there, Dave? It looks that way to me. And here's a good look at that puff coming right out Back Creek. You know, again, in this westerly direction, it's very shifty and it's very puffy. Flat water here, and blockade runners locked into it, really rocking out the river all of a sudden. Back in the starting area, you know, the ability to shift gears tonight is going to be all important, especially in here near the shore. The, we've seen the breeze go from four knots to about ten knots very quickly. So Zyberger won the first race of the series last week. It was a pretty breezy evening here, but they are already off to a very nice start here in the light stuff in this flat water. Just absolutely cruising. Within 10 seconds here on the 105s, Check this out, Mirage coming in on port. The balance of the fleet coming in on starboard. There's a start. Nice jive to starboard by Mirage, and I actually like where they are. That was very well done. And a minute later here at the start, Mirage did a very nice job clearing everyone out there. They own the boat end, and there's a start. So Mirage, Crash, and Penn Alexander's team right up here at the boat, all with great sets, all with great starts. Well done, guys. So the Crash team actually ended up with a bit of an hourglass. In the meantime, Penn Alexander and a few of the others, Doghouse, are able to sail through them to Leward while they get that sorted out. That's just a bummer on the first set. It is. Plenty of time to get that sorted out before the start, right? I'm not saying anything. I haven't sailed in years. <laughs> so meanwhile, about 100 yards behind, catching up with the Gitchells aboard Tenacious. These guys are always up there near the front of the class, both on Wednesday nights and on the weekends. They had a little bit of an interesting start there. They were about 20 seconds off the line, but when they hit it, 
they were at full speed and really rocking and actually able to pick a nice lane coming out here. So, so in a long race, that might not actually be a bad thing to do. Let's press her down and go fast. The J70s and the J80s are underway. Up next is the Etchells class. They're going to get started here. In the meantime, we're going to head up and catch up with the Harbor 20s just up the river. Harbor 20s making their way upwind here, up into the river. Their weather marks right off Triton Point. These are actually great conditions for these boats. It's flat water, gusty breeze. It's going to be very tactical for these guys. So very tactical racing here for the Harbor 20s. Just good stuff, but a familiar face back in front, Jim Mead and the Meteor. So it looks like Mark Kefauver on there with Jim Mead this evening. They got a seventh last week, but they're back in winning form here, leading the fleet around the first mark. And in second, a good 50 yards behind, Valela Marino de Marzo. And here comes the bulk of the fleet, this is going to be a big pinwheel. Wow, it's like a little ballet there. They all attack at the same time. They're all going to go around very, the park. Very That's gentlemanly, cool. Bruce. I didn't hear a raised voice. Very gentlemanly. Wow, you and I wouldn't fit in with this crowd, would we? <laughs> no, clearly. Anyone raised sailing a J24 wouldn't fit in here on the Harbor 20 round takes. I like it. The Harbor 20 fleet reaches back into Spa Creek. You can see some dark clouds in the distance there. There is some rain to the south. You know, this is not a, a passing situation here. This is a long reach into the harbor, and I think the Meteor sprung out in front has this one locked up. It would be hard to imagine otherwise. What a great fleet. Just great racing. They're going to be in quickly, get themselves up to the barbecue, had a nice tactical race here with a good jib reach into the finish. As the Harbor 20s make their way into the harbor, we catch up with the Hairsoft 12 and a half class. Nice look at the scene aboard Bit O' Luck Chuck Hurley out for a beautiful Wednesday night sail. I love those boats. Back in the main starting area, Here's a look at the PHRF2 and PHRF3 start. I'm really liking the start of where Ego's Dare there. A little late on the hoist, but they were in a great spot charging along. So staying with this PHRF3 class, Michael Brown's Revolution won the first series and got second last week. Unfortunately, underneath of Elvis and where Ego's Dare here, this is gonna be a long pull for them to try to get out of this spot. Out in front of the J105s on this long jib reach into the river, John Kircher and the Chessie crew with about a 50-yard lead over Mirage. They're having a nice race, huh? They sure are, and there's not going to be a lot of opportunities to pass between here and the finish line. It looks like a lot of jib reaching. Well, you saw the lineup, so I don't know how you get away. So a bit of a match race here between Chessie out in the lead and Mirage trying to ground them down, ground them down from the second place spot. Mirage just tacked, Chessie's carrying on, perhaps hoping to get into the creek here on one tack.
Arthur Libby and Tom Carter and the Doghouse crew on a nice roll here. They won the first race of the series last week, and here they've just had a come from behind. Very nice little segment here. It's put them ahead of Chessy and Mirage. They're covering Mirage, and they're going to lead them into Spa Creek. So lots of twists and turns picking their way through the moorings here in the harbor in this westerly breeze. And the finish order is pretty much established here. It looks like we have Mirage and then Doghouse and then Bat and poor Chessie's fall in the fifth. So it started as a promising westerly breeze, even up to 15 knots just before the start. Died out a little bit as the evening wore on. However, it stayed puffy, it stayed shifty, provided some excellent racing this evening. We watched Jim Mead and the Meteor team really put one on to the Harbor 20 class. We watched Chessie lead the J105 class most of the way around the track, but in the end, Heartbreak and Doghouse took the, uh, excuse me, Mirage took the line honors. It was a beautiful night on the Chesapeake Bay. On behalf of the Boatyard Bar and Grill in the Annapolis Yacht Club, I'm Dave Gandel from P2PTV. Thanks for watching.